We jumped into Beauty and the Beast, a perfect storm of fresh new directors, Ashman and Mencken, and a story that was waiting to bust open and be reinvented was how it all started. Hi, I'm Don Hahn. I'm the producer of Walt Disney Animation Studios' Beauty and the Beast. And I'm Mark Ken. I was a supervising animator for Bell in Beauty and the Beast. It's hard to believe, but today's the 30th anniversary of Beauty and the Beast, and it's a milestone movie in Disney animation history. And to celebrate, we'd love to tell you more about our experience making the film and what went into creating the character, especially the character of Bell. I can't believe it's been 30 years since we premiered this amazing movie. I've had the honor of animating many of Disney Animation's leading ladies, and now I'm excited to tell you more about how Belle developed into the remarkable character you see in our film. It was after the success of Little Mermaid, which was absolutely huge at the box office. We were terrified. We thought, how are we going to top this? We had a big false start. It was a challenge. You know, Walt Disney really struggled with Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast as a title appeared on lists back when he was making animated films. He abandoned it as something that was just too hard and he wasn't going to do it. We put together 20 minutes of the movie and it didn't work. We went to chateaus and we took pictures and video and we sketched and we just immersed ourselves in why we love this story in the first place. And we started over. Part of the reason it wasn't working was that Belle wasn't firing off as a character. She was very passive. In the original story, of course, in the fairy tale, she's extremely passive. And we didn't want that. We went through this big story change and, you know, we really were aware that we had to reinvent the Disney heroine. A lot of that came from a story crew and some women in particular, like our writer, Linda Wolverton, or Paige O'Hara herself, who did Belle's voice, Brenda Chapman, who was one of the keys on our story team. They were all very vocal and rightly so about trying to celebrate a new kind of Disney heroine. And I think that's where Belle grew out of. Linda, she was really the first woman to write an animated feature at Disney. One thing that Linda Wolverton gave us was a real clear picture of what Belle could be. The development of Belle, like most of our characters, starts with our visual development artists. And there's a lot of work that goes into developing not only the look of our characters, but who these characters are. One of the really exciting things about our version and development of Belle was actually seeing that process of her and the Beast falling in love. And of course, the underlying theme of ours is, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. The biggest thing we want to do is have the audience resonate with the character of Belle. And I think that comes from a lot of things. A lot of people, our writer Linda Wolverton, Mark Henn. But Belle was certainly unique at the time. Her main escape was her reading. Here's a Disney heroine, a Disney princess, who actually wants adventure in her life. And she's getting it from the books. She's getting it from a sense of a bigger world outside of her small provincial town. There were a couple of very specific design elements to Belle that were incorporated. And I recently had a conversation with uh, Brian McEntee. He was the art director. And he was telling us how in his designing of the overall art direction on the film, like the whole opening sequence, everybody else in town is, is in a warm color palette. And he deliberately chose a cooler, blue dress for her just to set up a contrast, just to visually support the idea that she stands out from the crowd. Belle was the beginning of a series of female characters that were more than just Disney princesses. They were characters who, in and of themselves, had a motivation and had a driver that was over and above just getting their prince and settling down. Now, there's nothing wrong with princes and there's nothing wrong with settling down, but I think as a young character in a Disney film, these characters became, starting with Belle, something more than that. She's strong, but she's also very compassionate, a very caring person, as we see. Those are really some interesting qualities to Belle. Belle, we want to include in our story, had a real hunger for adventure. That's the big change that we kind of went through with that character, is really making Belle a driver in the story, somebody who really pushes the story ahead and pushes the buttons of the beast and pushes Gaston so that that lead character has some energy and some passion to her. One of the most important aspects to finding and developing a character for us is the voice. When Paige walked in, there was a quality about her that was vulnerable and kind of precious and beautiful and strong. And Paige brought so much sensitivity to it. And that's what you want. You want the voice actor to inspire the animators. And then I hear the voice the recordings and the lines. And so that informs me of how to create my performance as an animator. There couldn't have been anybody else. Bell had to be Paige. And of course, the other great advantage we had was Howard Ashman and Alan Mankin. We would storyboard something and then Alan would play it on the piano. And then Howard would say, no, 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 that's not it. 
And then he'd come in the next day with donuts and a new set of lyrics. And when you're lucky enough to have Ashwin and Mencken as your songwriters, those songs become tent poles in your story. The opening song of Bell, you introduce all the characters and then be our guest, the Beauty and the Beast ballad. Those are really strong milestones in your plot that then you can connect with connective tissue and turn into your story. So in adapting the fairy tale, we really leaned on all of those elements on Ashman and Mencken, on reinventing the story, on throwing out things that were dated, an active bell and an active beast that are co-equals that are pushing the story together. That along with the enchanted objects and really making it our own. And that's something that Disney's always done. I think we were inspired by Walt Disney because he did that. So all those factors contributed to Beauty and the Beast being unbelievably the first animated film ever to be nominated for a Best Picture. And that was in 1992. And it wasn't until years later, like in 2001, that the category for Best Animated Feature was created. So it was really incredible for an animated film to even get close to being considered for a Best Picture back then. And I think people were finally saying, animation is not just this sideshow, it's actually a legitimate art form. We were shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. To this day, when I meet people and talk, more often than not, people will tell me that Beauty and the Beast is still their favorite film. You may not remember the jokes and you, you may not remember all the plot points, but you'll remember the emotion and the love story between these two characters. The ability to continue the tradition of amazing movies that I grew up watching with uh, the first generation of Disney artists and animators. And now my generation, we kind of took the baton from them that they handed off to us and that we've been able to carry it on. And to be a part of that, knowing that I was a part of that, it's just, you can't, it's hard to put words to it. It's just very, very special. So a big thank you for celebrating Beauty and the Beast 30th anniversary with us. You can watch Beauty and the Beast now on Disney Plus.